atomic batteries to power. Turbines to speed. Roger. Ready to move out. You ever dance with the devil in the pale moonlight? This town needs an enema. Riddle me this. Riddle me that. Who's afraid of the big black bat? When God forbid, ashes. You have my permission to die. This is your liberation. My mother warned me about getting into cars with strange men. This isn't a car. 20 years in Gotham, how many good guys are left? How many stayed that way? He has the power to wipe out the entire human race. Tell me, do you bleed? You will. I want you to tell all your friends about me. What are you? He's a silent guardian. A watchful protector. I'm Batman. Let the games begin. Welcome to the Batman on Film Podcast. Here are your hosts, Bill Jet Ramey and Rick Shu. Hey now. Welcome to Volume 2, Episode 45. This is actually an emergency, one of our emergency episodes of the Batman on Film Podcast. The BOF is the sponsor and a proud member of the Batman Podcast Network. Check us out at BatmanPodcastNetwork.com. All right, Rick. Welcome to our emergency podcast. How are you doing, sir? It's been a while since we've done an emergency podcast, but I think today's a good one. Okay, well, I'll explain why it's a good day to do a our emergency podcast. Well, first of all, let's just let everybody know that our roundtablers aren't here with us because by virtue of a, an emergency podcast, you just happen to be, you took some time off today yeah. and I just happen to be working at home and we just caught one another, so we're just knocking this out. Mm-hmm. So nothing weird that Ryan and Justin aren't with us. Yes. Uh, this is a very spontaneous podca- podcast to talk about the exit of the director of uh, of The Flash. Yes. And, uh, and what that means for the DCU and what that means for all of us fans. And, Bill, you you wrote a, a great piece in, on Batman on film yesterday. Do you have the press release in front of you from Warner Brothers that you might get read real fast? Well, I've got – well, there was no press release from Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers I'm sorry, not from yeah, Warner Brothers, yeah. but from the director. A statement yeah. from the director. Warner yeah. Brothers didn't comment, but the story – a Hollywood reporter broke the story yesterday evening that uh, Rick Femua was going to leave The Flash over creative differences, quote-unquote. But he did release a statement, and he says that when I was approached by Warner Brothers in D.C. about the possibility of directing The Flash, I was excited about the opportunity to enter this amazing world of characters that I love growing up and still do to this day. I was also excited to work with Ezra Miller, who is a phenomenal young actor. I pitched a version of the film in line with my voice, humor, and heart. While it's disappointing that we couldn't come together creatively on the project, I remain grateful for the opportunity. I will continue to look for opportunities to tell stories that speak to a fresh, generational, topical, and multicultural point of view. I wish Warner Brothers DC, John Berg, Jeff Johns, and Ezra Miller all the best as they continue their journey into the Speed Force. And it also says, sources say that Dopes Helmer, his vision of making a movie, The Flash, of course, with more edge, clashed with the studio's take. What do you, what do you think about that, this part right here? His his vision of making the Flash with more edge clashed with the studio's take. What do you think about that, Rick? Well, first of all, it's interesting because what, and there's there's mixed reporting on this. Mm-hmm. When I think about his work, and I'm not overly familiar with it, but I I, I know his work. I like Dope. Mm-hmm. I think Dope was dope. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I'm here all day. But anyway, I, I really did. There was a lot of heart and a mm-hmm. lot of humor in that film, and, and just it's a very human funny it's a great it's a feel good great film and i can see where the direction the DCEU says that they're going in and have and have those components in this film and work and Inter- interesting that it's actually going the opposite direction and saying that well what he was having his his what he was proposing was too dark now that concerns me how far are they going with this Anti-dark, you know, yeah. movement. Well, let me let me ask you this: well, What does that even mean? Because you'll have some a little bit of you'll have a little bit of uh, expertise in regards to your background in film. But some of the um, pushback I got about the article was like, 
Well, uh, Rick was, he signed on in June and they started course correcting in March and blah, blah, blah. And like there was some kind of, you know, there shouldn't have been an issue. Here's my thing. If they had course corrected in March after Batman v Superman and they hired this gentleman to direct the Flash in June, shouldn't they have, they already had come to some sort of agreement how that, what they want to do with the film? Yes. Because this thing, this, this was a film that was about to go, I mean, it's already in pre-production. They've had, they've had casting for this film already besides Ezra Miller. I just find it strange. You know, you know, I, I don't think that's, uh, to me, that, that makes it even worse. You know what? Is it, you get my point on that? I mean, you're. No, ab- absolutely. Yeah. Is, that, is that there was a vision that was agreed upon and then for some other outside force, now those opinions have changed. Is it this, is it the dailies they're watching from Justice League? Is mm-hmm. it, what is well? What is it? What exactly is the the catalyst for for these changes? And you know, and Bill, you mentioned this in your op-ed as well. You said that yeah. this is a bode, this doesn't bode well for the DCU, and it doesn't. And you also said that people would be fooling themselves to say otherwise, and they would. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, what does this mean for Aquaman and everything everything else? So basically, what this comes down to right now, at the end of the day, is Wonder Woman's in in the bag, and so yeah. that's coming out. It looks fabulous. Hopefully, it stays that way. But all this is about, <laughs> and your joke was actually rather poignant. You said this is this is about to not be the DCEU. It's about to be the BEU. Yeah, it's about to be just the Batman extended universe. And and I'm wondering, I, I, I'm not is, kidding, Rick. No, I, I know. I don't yeah. think you are. I, I'm wondering, is all this just sort of being pushed aside and let's get Ben Affleck's solo film going? Is that is that what this is? I I don't know. I I I, I don't know, man. And and does it does it not validate? Uh, what Chris Nolan said about that you should, we should not have these, the DC characters. We should not have them in they a They should shared be their universe. own thing individually. And we, yeah, we, you, and you and I were talking off mic a few minutes ago yeah. and you were talking about the history of these comics and how yes. Marvel started this way. This Marvel, is, they, all, they all were a part of a shared universe from the word go. From right? the word go, yes. I had many conversations with Michael Uslan about comic book history and the difference between DC and Marvel and how and how that applies to the films. The films today, like you said, Marvel and like he said, like he told me, educated me. Marvel was created to be a shared universe. Period. No, right. no ifs, ands, or buts. D- DC, the DC characters were created individually, and they were individual, in the, had their own individual stories for in their own individual worlds for a long time before. We ever got any t- sort of interaction, and really, you didn't have Justice League until the early '60s, and that was more of a gimmick because, you know, comic books were was a dying medium at that point, and they needed a gimmick to get them together. Yes, Superman and Batman had met up before in the comics, but for the most part, Superman did his thing in Superman in action, Batman did his thing in Detective and Batman, and that and that's just the way it was. And even, I'm a, you know, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I'm just afraid past this prologue because you say the word gimmick and my ears come up like, like my dogs is that's, that's when I, when I watch the Justice League sizzle reel, mm-hmm. reel, that's my Texas will, will, will come out occasionally. <laughs> um, that's what I see. I see a big gimmick and hopefully I'm wrong. I, I, I want to be wrong. Trust me. We well, talked about that nauseam. It, would it be better to say it's a, it's a bit more of putting the cart before the horse? Well, the, yes, Van Gig- that's, that's yeah. what Batman v Superman was. That oh, was pretty yeah, popular. true to, as well. Yes, right. So at this point, the card is there because that was BBS. It was a thrown together half ass card, but it, it's there. And so now, you know, I guess well, it's okay. Let me I'm say the- this, and 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 I know you, you disagree a little bit with this because you see it's, it's a few Easter eggs in in Man of Steel, but Man of Steel was was conceived by. Chris Nolan and David Goyer to be Superman's Batman Begins, and the the goal was to have a sequel to it that wouldn't include a straight sequel to Man of Steel, a straight Superman film coming right out of that, and not what we got with Batman v Superman. That was that was a result of the quote unquote disappointment, panic, whatever you want to call it, that Warner Brothers had when Man of Steel didn't do as well at the box office as they had hoped. And let's be honest, it, it did not get good reviews, even though I liked Man of Steel personally myself. So they, they completely altered the, the, the path that Man of Steel was originally put on. When it, when it was put on the tracks, it was going to go down one way, and then it got 
the tracks got switched somewhere after Man of Steel was released, and now we're now we're sitting here with you know some of the stops on this track on this train ride have been BVS and then Suicide Squad. So I, I guess I guess the slight disagreement I have, and it's kind of it's kind of a silly argument because what's the point of it anyway? But is that I don't disagree that the path was to have an an mm-hmm. absolute Superman sequel. I just don't think it was never not intended to have a shared universe because I don't see why they would have had Wayne Enterprises and other things in the film. And I'm still kind of convinced that the, that moment after the oil rig well, blows up that that's Aquaman esque. I like to think so anyway because it's cool to think that. Well, you can think that, but it doesn't that mean it was actually the case? Well, but, it, but, but keep, it, but keep it, in it, mind, Chris had nothing. But to that's do. in conjunction with yeah. many other things. It's, if it was just that, I would be it would be a stretching, but. You know, Aquaman is in these films now, yeah. and the Wayne Enterprises and things that were Easter eggs. But regardless of that, it was there was supposed to be a Superman sequel. Well, it was never yeah. intended for yes. Batman. Yes, that, be that's, the sequel. That's, Superman. The, that's, that's the bottom that's, line. Yeah, that's the bottom line, right? And, and we we can't disagree yeah. with that because no. that's that's public record anyway. Yes. Um. And so and so once they did that, and once they shoehorned that in, mm-hmm. because that's exactly what they did. They shoehorned it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The the intro to Bruce Wayne at the beginning of, of BBS is probably my least favorite scene in the film next to the Doomsday stuff. Because, first of all, I just don't see – we didn't need it again. We just had it with Batman Begins, and the bats lifting him up was – I mean, you almost want to laugh out loud, right? Um, but I do understand you. they wanted to show his parents – Different actors playing them, so you could visualize who they actually were. Well, you had, and, and then you had to set up the Martha moment. But that's you know we're getting into some. We're, well, we're, we're well, the back Martha into BBS, moment, you know, I, right? But but that, be that as it be that as it may, I'm just talking about. I understand at least having some sort of flashback, but the yeah. whole setup at the very beginning was just it was just a Nolan rehash done weird, and then on top of that. You had no other real um, background of Batman. He's just shoehorned in the Superman sequel, and then and then Superman himself is cast aside. And we've talked about this at Yeah, yeah we have. There's all these yeah. problems with BBS now, and 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 now that and, and a couple of email clicks introducing uh, the uh, the extended characters, the Aquaman, the Flash, Cyborg, mm-hmm. etc. We now have Justice League coming out, and there has been a lot of negative publicity surrounding that. Wonder Woman has had a director change. Aquaman has had a lot of issues. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, I'm going blank. What's the director's name? Aquaman? Oh, James Wan. Uh, Wan, thank you. Who, who's a great filmmaker. I mean, great filmmaker. Is, yeah. Awesome. I love him. And But he's had to go to Twitter and Instagram to sh- look. See, I'm still here. Yes, I'm not yes. behind this big mural of well, Aquaman. Yeah. yeah, what I call the, 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 the everything is awesome. Mentality. Everything is awesome. You know, everything is awesome mentality. So ultimately... This is a lot of ranting here. Let, mm-hmm. Let's let's try to have a cohesive message. Mm-hmm. I think I think I, it, it, I think this is basically where you and I are 100 percent agreement mm-hmm. is that this is a bad look. The optics suck. Mm-hmm. It does not bode well for the uh, hype or lack thereof around the DCU. And my guess is that Wonder Woman is obviously going to happen. That's in the bag. Mm-hmm. Looks great. Hopefully, it, hopefully it is great. It'd be wonderful if it's just a great film and they knock it out of the park. Man, I want nothing more. Yeah, I agree. Right. I, so myself. we all do. Yes. Right. Absolutely. We all do. And then Justice League is coming, whether we like it or not. Yeah. I, I, I think that Aquaman and the Flash, if I just had to put some money on it right now as a gambling man, that we're going to get the Batman solo film first. And you know, I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it because I mean, you're already, they're ramping up. We just had the last conversation last week, me, you, and, uh, Justin and Ryan, that we all now believe that, that Batman, Affleck's Batman, whatever in hell, the Batman, whatever it's going to be called, is going to be a 2018 release. Can you see them moving that to the Flash's March 2018 release date now? I, at, at this point, I can, yeah. Because that, I, I, I mean, the, the, um, Deadline Hollywood's reporting that Flash is going to get pushed back. It says production will get pushed back, which means it, it, you, you can almost chalk up that the release date's going to get pushed back as well. Well, they, what they need to do, they need to push it back. They need, they need to tap the brakes. They need to move forward with Ben Affleck's Batman if he's ready, if the script is ready, of course. Mm-hmm. And they, they have, they know that's going to work because it's Batman. Affleck is amazing in the role and, mm-hmm. and he wants to do a good film. He's a, a marvelous director. We're all very excited for that. And let, this other stuff at least try to quasi organically unfold because it's been so shoehorned in. Let's see, will Justice League work? 
Well, it, it, because if that film doesn't work, no one's going to give a damn about an Aquaman or a Flash spinoff. Mm-hmm. They're just not. Now, Wonder Woman is a little different because she's much more iconic than they are. Mm-hmm. And let's face it, she is she is a a once in a lifetime one out of 300 million people star. She's she is a remarkable talent. And she's just she's stunning. She's Gal, stunning. Gal Gadot, Gadot, Gosh, she's you're just about. it's not this is not a just a physical thing although that's there. She is fantastic. And so they also know that. They have a real star. And I know those other guys. Ezra Miller's great. Uh, I, I don't have any problems with the casting, but I'm just saying that they, they, they can really capitalize on this with her. I think with the other guys, they need to just tap the brakes. Let's see if Justice League works. Because if it doesn't work, why, why bother? Just why? Why bother? May, you know, they, they may be reduced to cameo roles, much like in Marvel, which is essentially what the Hulk is now. Because, um, you know, they're not probably ever going to do another Hulk film. And, and maybe they don't need to. Maybe these guys don't ever need their own solo film. Yeah. There's other Marvel characters that have never gotten their solo film, and mm-hmm. they probably won't. Yeah. If they're right, just let them be glorified cameos. But this just looks, it, I, I don't, you know what? This could end up being much to do of no, about nothing. This, the Flash may be a fantastic film. Ultimately, when it's when whoever they get to take over the helm of it and so forth, but it it, it looks ter- it looks bad, and it's just not it's not good PR. It's not it's just not a good look, you know. It's not a good look. What when do you think that we'll get something official from the studio, or will we? Well, they've got to move quick. I mean, I just wish that they had not panicked, held the course, and frankly, I wish they had done what Chris said. It just you know make all the DC films you want, but. Don't you know? Don't have this this Jones for a, a Just League film and this shared universe because you, then you're going to get into all sorts of issues. You know, creativity and and the kind of directors and writers and so forth you're going to get for these projects. And it it just seems to be happening. I mean, we're, we're talking three directors have come and gone on the Flash already. Well, and they, and they talk about wanting to have, have had these films director centric. Yes, and and, 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 and I don't I don't yeah. know if that's you know, obviously it's it's, it's, it's impossible. Right. It's impossible right. to have filmmaker-driven films in a shared universe. It's it just it's it's that's the bottom line. That's the bottom right. line. And and let me ask you this, Rick, because I get I see some of the you know reaction on on the Facebook page about this. You know what I said about the situation. And a lot of it is there is still a quite a bit of of fans with with the everything is awesome mentality. I think you're just you're sticking your head in the sand if you if you if you're gonna sit there and say there's nothing wrong with the DCEU, Warner Brothers is perfectly happy with it. These films are just making all kind of money. Let me ask you, did did BBS make the money that w- that it was supposed to make, Rick? No, I mean it's not. Also, it's also it's not supposed to have that negative a response. Yeah, that, yes, yes, right. That yes. it's not that bad. That and, was that's that's just bad. And no, it didn't make the money it needed to make. It made money. Yes, great. It's Ben Affleck's highest grossing film ever. Yeah, good for him. I'm I'm, I'm glad he deserves it. But no, it did not. It wasn't a, a million dollar, a billion dollar juggernaut. But, but look, Suicide Squad, yeah. not either. Yeah, but, but, I mean Suicide Squad. No, Suicide Squad. I, I mean, yeah. it, yes, it was a success, but it also got bad reviews. And that's yeah, not. And that's, they're, that's and, not and they're, and they're about to release the director's cut with that's, more footage in yeah, it because that's, that's what I want to bring up again. You had to have a extended cut of BVS to to show the true film that they wanted to have released. Obviously, I guess the same thing is with, with Suicide Squad. We're getting a uh, extended cut, directors, whatever in the hell it is, of Suicide Squad with more footage. But look look what you've had since BBS, Rick. You've had Course Correction. You've had uh, Justice League go from being a two-parter to a one-parter with, with tone change. You've had the creation of DC Films with John Berg and Jeff Johns to oversee these films. You've had Ben Affleck elevated to an executive producer on Justice League to have more creative control as well. Uh, he had a hell of a lot to do with Justice League, more than, than um, we, that's been reported. So you, you can't sit back and say everything is awesome with the DCEU here in November of 2016. I'm sorry. I think they should tap the brakes, say it one more time, let Wonder Woman run its course, Release this extended cut for uh, Suicide Squad. I will definitely buy it and watch it. And then let Affleck run with his film. And then see what happens from there. Maybe Justice League will be a 
a, a surprise masterpiece. And mm-hmm. if it is it's fantastic. And then that will lead to that'll, that'll serve as a, as a, as a springboard for some of these other characters to have solo films. And by the way, it might help make those story stories stronger because if Justice League works, it's already in production. Mm-hmm. Then build on what works. Don't mm-hmm. try to like don't don't try to be three steps ahead of of the audience. Let them tell you where to go, right? Yeah. At this juncture, well, anyway. Let, let me ask you this, and uh, we'll start wrapping this up because we want to do a quick one. But let's say that that's what happens. They, let's say they move Affleck's Batman to that March release date of 2018. You've got Justice League being released in November of 2017. Is that five month gap less than less than half a year between? And let's make no mistake about it. Justice League is is kind of sort of going to be a Batman film. I mean, he's like the main character, no doubt about it. Is that too short of a time span between quote unquote Batman films? I mean, would you want to release a solo Batman film right after? That quickly after Justice League, but I guess you could say the same thing for the Flash. But we're talking about—we're not talking about the Flash. We're talking about the greatest comic book superhero and, and arguably the most popular comic book superhero amongst the mainstream, especially when it comes to film and, and Batman. Is that too short of a time? That's a tough one. But you know what? Who says that they have to release something in March? If Flash gets pushed back, it gets pushed back. Does something have to take that slot? No. Nothing has to take that slot, so push it back. It, it needs a year. You know these. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, you know me. I always get my Star Wars plug in. They've got, they have Star Wars films coming out once a year now, and uh, that's almost too much, right? I, I'm, I'm afraid of overkill for that franchise at some point. But at least they're giving it a well, year. Speak of that real quick. Is that too much? Uh, I, I, I'm afraid it might ultimately be. Because yes. you are a diehard Star Wars fan. Yes. I'll, I'll put it to you like this. I don't really. I'm not even all that excited about Rogue One. I have no. I could really care less about the Han Solo. Prequel. Um, I do want to really? Ewan McGregor. No, I'll, I'll, don't get me wrong. I'll go see it. I'm just yeah. saying, but I would rather them do a Ewan McGregor Obi Wan story. I think uh, there's something compelling about between Episode three and four for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a young Han Solo just being sticky and cute now, and and then Rogue One. I I, I don't really care for another Death Star centric story. But my my point to all that is though, but at least they're giving the Disney Lucasfilm is giving us a year. Mm-hmm. And um, I just I, I am worried about Overkill for for that franchise. They have a lot on the books, man, and I and I guarantee you there will be a, a nine or there'll be a ten, eleven, twelve um, trilogy as well. It, it means it's just in, uh, inevitably going to happen. It would be to me from November Justice League to March. That's too much. That's too soon. Part that's of, too soon. Part of the fun about those films is the anticipation. You would virtually it would almost be. I don't know. That's just too soon for me. I, I, I mean, if it's something like Back to the Future 2 and 3 where they were shot back to back and they were intended to be, that's one thing. But mm-hmm. in a film uh, in the universe like this now, not meant to be. Just sum it up. What, what, what's your – after hearing this news and you combine it with everything we've been through the, since uh, the last year with, since BBS came out, what's your, what's your take right now on the DCEU and what's your, my, com- what's your confidence level and, what, and just how you feel about the whole damn thing? Yeah, I, okay. My, my thoughts are this. I want them to take this opportunity to just stop, slow down, put put your put everything into Wonder Woman and promoting that and getting that right, and then get rid of that March slate for next year or mm-hmm. for uh yeah for no wait what what am I saying when does Wonder Woman come out March of 2017 right no no hold on Wonder Woman comes out. This coming June, June seventeenth, June. Not, yes. not June, and then and then Justice League comes out in November. In November, that's what's okay. on, that's on the slate for next year. Yes, just yes, keep that obviously as it is. That's yeah. not going anywhere. Okay, Agreed. and and then let's not do another release until the Batman film is ready. Okay, until mm-hmm. the Batman film is ready to roll. Don't do anything else, and wait to green light anything else until we get a reaction from Justice League. Quit trying to force these films. This universe may not work with all these characters branching off, mm-hmm. and they're not they're not letting them prove themselves individually. They have to prove themselves as a group first, as an ensemble, before mm-hmm. they get their solo film. Fine, then let that happen. Marvel didn't do that. Marvel didn't just start planning solo films for some of these characters until it worked, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I completely agree with what you said. I mean, I think that's a great plan. Put out what's out there as planned. Let's see what happens with Justice League, and then we'll go from there. Of course, and just, but just we are, yeah, but chill. we we are getting the Batman film, so chill, yeah. chill, and 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 
and and own it. Just own it and and commit to Batman for right now, and let all this other stuff play out because it, it, none of it's been proven yet. Quite the contrary. One one other question I want to ask you, or actually two, but the first one is: What do you tell the fans? These fans that are just they want this so bad, they want it to work so bad, they want the, these DC films to be to happen so bad that they can't they can't see the forest through the trees. You know what I, you know what I mean? Well, I, I I don't I don't think that majority of them are, are being disingenuous, and and when they say they love BBS, I believe them, I, I, and I'm happy yeah. for them, I, but. I think what they have to understand to do is to differentiate. But you're not you're not helping the cause if you're if you're sitting there saying everything is awesome. No, no, no. Yeah, and here and that's what that's, that's what my, point. my next point. Yeah, you, they have to learn to differentiate their own personal views of it, and then what the reality is of what's actually happening and how the masses are responding to it. You want this to be a cult franchise with low budget, limited release stuff because that's that's what you're actually asking for if you want it to stay the course, or do you want this to work? And the way it's designed and intended to work, because right now it's going down the wrong path and it's going backwards. And so I would just say to them, it is not working the way it is. Hope for them to make a course change that actually will ultimately benefit this universe mm -hmm. and the end benefit you as a fan, because then then if you really do like these actors and things that they put in place for these films, and so do you and I, I, I would like to see them play out for many years to come. I want Henry Cavill to be like Hugh Jackman is for Wolverine. I really I want to see that. He deserves it. I want to see Affleck play Batman several times. Mm -hmm. And the 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 route that it's going right now, it's going to it's going to crash and burn and we're not going to get it and then what are they going to do? And then it's all all it's going to be at that point is is Batman 24/7. And then that can ultimately burn itself out because burn how many Batman, yeah. yeah, how many how many Batman reboots can any of us stomach? Mm -hmm. That was that's what I would say is understand the difference in how you feel and what the reality is because those two things aren't necessarily synonymous. All right, one last question: Did you get my nod to Star Wars in the article I wrote this morning? Of course I did. You said that he was our that. Uh, who, who did you? Ben Affleck was our only hope. Yeah, our help, last hope. Help, help us, Ben Affleck. Yeah, right. help us, Ben Affleck. You're our only hope. Oh, yes, that was just it's for a, you, my friend. <laughs> a great, and, and by the way, that line also is a, is also why I want to see a Ewan McGregor film between three and four. Just FYI. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So, uh, all right. Thanks everybody for listening to this emergency uh, Batman on Film podcast. Before we go, Rick, anything you want to plug before? Rachel today's my five, today's my five, today's my five year old daughter's my oldest daughter's birthday. I'm about to run up to her school and pick her up early and do a little birthday thing with her. Other than that, uh, this demoralizing, disgusting, vile election. No matter who you're voting for, we all agree this thing sucks. <laughs> come, come over on Left Shoe Politics and let's have some friendly conversations. And um, and then go to my uh, follow me on Twitter at Shoe Rick and hit me up on my Batman on Film Shoes Facebook page. That's all I got. All right. All right. We'll uh, and also pretty soon Rick and I are gonna have the uh the plans for the uh lego batman movie watch party batman on film lego batman watch party and we'll announce on batman on film so that'll be uh, fun and uh till then we'll catch you next time thanks for listening to the batman on film podcast a proud member and sponsor of the batman podcast network batman podcast network.com you can listen to the podcast via iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, Spreaker, and wherever good podcasts like this one can be found. Follow Jet on Twitter at Batman on Film and on the BOF Facebook fan page at facebook.com slash jet.batmanonfilm. Email Jet via jet at batman-on-film.com. Follow Rick on Twitter at Shoe Rick and on Facebook at facebook.com slash BOF Shoe. For Jet, Rick, the BOF Roundtablers, Justin and Ryan, I'm announcer Rachel. Thank you and good night.